A while back, I made a video about assembling and getting started with the Xtool D1 Pro. In that video, I had identified what is probably the machine's biggest shortcoming, and that would be the wiring management. The wiring harness on the gantry is normally routed close to the moving parts and the belts underneath, and that harness that runs along the frame rail tends to want to bend inwards towards the workspace, potentially hitting your workpiece. If you have a large honeycomb laser bed, this also pushes the harness into the edges of the honeycomb, eventually wearing away at the harness. Another issue is the harness getting pinched between the gantry and rear frame member at the maximum Y travel. This can prevent the rear limit switch from triggering if you're using absolute positioning. At the time, I was able to slightly improve the situation using some creativity with zip ties and adhesive cable clips, but I also wasn't using the air assist, so I didn't have that extra tube to contend with. Since then, I've come up with a much better solution that addresses all of these issues and accommodates the air assist tube, and you can find this kit on my website, embracemaking.com. The assembly of the kit is pretty straightforward. We'll begin by removing the laser module. Now I've got the 40 watt here, but it's the same process for the 20 watt and the 10 watt. You'll have to disconnect the harness at the back of the laser module. Now the 40 watt module has an extra two pin connector, whereas the 10 and 20 watt do not. Either way, it's all part of the same harness. So just remove it from the module. And then on the front of the machine, use the thumb screw on the side to release the module and completely remove it. And again, I'm working with the 40 watt module here, which has a different gantry. Xtool has tucked away some of the harness inside of the gantry. So I'm gonna pull that out. If you got the 10 or 20 watt, it's probably just zip tied to the back. So you'll remove and cut those zip ties. Next, I'm gonna disconnect the stepper motor and I'm going to cut this extra zip tie that I had attached during my installation of the 40 watt. And I'm also going to disconnect the small harness going to the limit switch on the bottom of the gantry. Next, I'm gonna remove a portion of the harness that's sitting under the frame member that goes to the main board. Mine is attached to the underside of the frame member using these adhesive cable tie clips, and I explained why in the intro of this video. It was a custom installation that I did. If you installed yours according to the Xtool instruction manual, your harness might be on the inside edge of that frame member. Regardless of where it was, now that it's free, it can be placed outside of the frame, and I'm gonna to start to remove the electrical tape wrap because this is actually two harnesses that are held together with this tape. The only tape wrap that I won't remove is the one closest to the main board. It's fine to leave the two portions of the harness still attached at this point. I'm now gonna route the harness on the outside of the frame up at an angle towards the rear of the machine. And I'm gonna be using a single adhesive cable tie clip to hold the harness in this position while we work on the rest of the cable management. The cable tie clip will sit on an angle parallel to the wire harness because we want it to sit in this state as naturally as possible without pulling or kinking the wire harness. Use a single tie strap to generally hold it in this position, but do not fully tighten it down at this point. Looking inside the front frame member, you can see there's another hole that we can utilize here for an additional tie strap and we can hold the wire harness in place and conveniently there's already some tape there on the harness to protect it from the tie strap. And at this point, we don't need to fully tighten down this tie strap either. You can leave it a little bit loose. Now that we don't need to flip our machine upside down anymore, you can put the laser module back inside of the carriage. Next, you can grab one of these Y-axis stanchions from the kit, and these will be adhered to the frame member on the right-hand side. They come with a double-sided tape pre-applied on the bottom. Now you'll be getting the good stuff. I'm using the cheaper stuff on mine while I film this video in case I have to tear it off to reshoot any of these video clips. The stanchion profile is intended to accommodate the wire harness in the bottom slot and a six millimeter outer diameter or roughly one quarter inch outer diameter air assist tube in the top. The procedure for getting these things in there is as follows. You'll always install the wire harness first and you'll push it up towards the slot for the air assist tube and then down into the portion for the wire harness so it'll sit down in that slot comfortably. We'll repeat this procedure for the remaining two stanchions and you can see that I have the two parts of the wire harness pushed together and held inside of these stanchions. Now we'll work on the position of the first one so that the wire harness bends naturally up and into that stanchion and keep watching because in a moment I'll give you guys some reference measurements so you can replicate exactly what I've done here. Now that I'm happy with the position I'll remove the double sided tape from the bottom of the stanchion and should fit snugly directly onto the corner of the frame member. Press the tape down in place for maximum adhesion and before we attach the other two, we're gonna take care of the connection over at the stepper motor. And this portion of the harness is going to get held in place using one of the original mounting hole locations 
for the cable ties. And to add a little extra protection, I'm gonna wrap some electrical tape around the end of this harness. While the ribbon cable already does have a woven sleeve around it, it doesn't hurt to have a little extra protection. And so as I mentioned, I'm gonna take this plug, I'll plug it back into the stepper motor. I'll also reconnect the small harness that goes to the limit switch. And now you can see that the harness will naturally sort of sit in this position where it was originally mounted and we'll replace that tie strap. So we'll keep the connectors from getting pulled on so that they'll never come loose. Now we can revisit the remaining two stanchions on the right frame member. And what I'm gonna do next here is I'm gonna push the gantry towards the front of the machine to find out the perfect position for the third stanchion. You don't wanna push it too far towards the back of the machine so that the wire harness is getting pulled on and you don't want it too far towards the front where the harness is sloppy. I'll move the gantry back and forth several times to make sure that I'm happy with this general position. And again, if you don't skip ahead in this video in a moment, I'll provide you with some reference dimensions. I'm now ready to peel back the double-sided tape and stick this third stanchion down. Once it's good and stuck down, the last one to do is the second one placed between the first and third, and naturally we'll just put that directly in the middle. The same process applies here. We'll remove the backing for the double-sided tape to make sure it's pressed down securely in place. Then I'll grab a little more tape and tape the two harnesses together between the two stanchions and also to the right of the third one. And for your reference, the edge of the first stanchion is about seven and three quarters of an inch from the front of the machine, and the rear of the back stanchion is about 14 and a quarter inch from the front of the machine. Now, if you have the X-Tool frame extension kit, the dimension for the front stanchion will be the same, but the dimension for your third stanchion will be longer. Next, we're gonna install what I'm calling the gantry routing block. And this thing here is going to route our wiring harness parallel to our X axis on the gantry. I'll begin by removing the two screws from the top, and this is gonna release the cover and expose the PCB underneath. The PCB will have a label on it saying connector in, and this is where you'll attach the harness we were just working on coming from the main board. It has provisions for the second connector coming from the 40 watt harness, but if you have the 10 watt or 20 watt, just use the larger connector and ignore the smaller one. You won't need it. Then we can place the PCB back on top of the plastic block, and there are some locating pegs to make sure that it sits in the proper position. We can put the cover back on top and then put the two screws back in. And before putting those two screws back in, just make sure everything is sitting flat and looks properly aligned. Now we can remove the backing on the double-sided tape on the bottom of the routing block, and we're gonna be positioning this directly on top of the gantry. Drag the carriage over to this side of the machine to make sure that when you go to position the block, it's not going to be touching the wheels. A good position for the block is about one inch or roughly 25 millimeters from the edge of the gantry. Double check that your routing block does not come in contact with the wheels of the carriage. After shooting the majority of this video, I added one other feature to the routing block, which you can take advantage of right now, and that's two holes in the top cover where you can use another cable tie as additional strain relief for this harness. And because this video clip was shot after the majority of this video, you may not see this cable tie appear in subsequent clips, but the two holes in the cover will be there in the kit that you receive. Now we can deal with the remainder of the loose wiring harness, and so what I'm gonna do here is try and find the point at which the harness going to the routing block and the second harness going down to the stepper motor will move together in unison. I'm moving the gantry back and forth to find that sweet spot, and I keep adding a little bit of slack to the top harness, and you can see eventually I'll find a point where the two harnesses are moving together reasonably well and they're not being pulled. And I'll grab my electrical tape and at that point there, I'll secure the two harnesses together. The XX can be looped back towards the front of the machine and using a few tie straps, we can tie it to the portion of the harness between those stanchions. And at this point, if you followed my reference dimensions, you should have enough slack in the harness that your setup should look more or less like mine right now. Next, we can address the final bit of wiring going from the routing block to the laser module and your kit will come with one of these 750 millimeter long wire extensions. It comes with the extra two pin connector for the 40 watt module, but again, if you have the 20 watt or 10 watt, you just won't need to plug those in. I'll start by plugging the connectors into the routing block, and then I'll lay the rest of the wire down flat on top of the gantry, 
and I'll loop it up and into the connectors onto the laser module. You can already see how this forms a nice natural loop in the flat cable with minimal twist. Now we can take our gantry cable clips and you can see they have a similar geometry to the stanchions where one side will hold the flat wiring harness cable and the other side will hold the air assist tube. We'll grab three of them and install them onto the wire harness and then we'll sit them flat down on the top of the X gantry. We'll move one of them close to the routing block. One of them will go roughly in the middle of the gantry and the other one in between those two. And similar to what we did on the Y axis, we'll move the laser module back and forth and find the sweet spot for the cable clip on the right hand side. And that'll be roughly positioned right in the middle of the gantry. At the extreme ends of travel of the laser module, you want there to be some slack in the cable, not too much that it's sloppy, but also not too tight that the cable is being pulled on. And similar to the routing block, you want to make sure that those cable clips are not coming in contact with the wheels. And now that we have those stuck down to the top of the gantry, we can take our air assist tube. And again, this is going to be either six millimeter or roughly one quarter inch outer diameter tube and feed it through the back of the routing block and it will come out the side. Once it comes out the side of the routing block, you can pull it along the X gantry and on the 40 watt module, you can insert it into the push fitting at the top of the module. And if you got the 20 watt or the 10 watt, your air assist fitting will be on the side of the laser module. Then you can insert the tube into the cable clips. It'll just snap into place. Move your module back and forth along the gantry. And if you've got the right amount of hose pulled through, the loop of the hose and the wiring harness should move together. To keep the currently unconstrained loop of the hose and wiring harness neat and tidy, we're going to take one of the extra cable clips included in the kit and we're going to be installing it onto the loop. I'm also going to place a cable tie in the middle of the cable clip to make sure that the wiring harness cannot pop out. We're going to take this cable clip and we're going to be sliding it down into this area here somewhat close to the last cable clip that was adhered to the top of the gantry. And that's because the hose can sometimes still flex and get in the way of the wheels. And we definitely don't want that. And so by moving that cable clip down, it's gonna prevent that from ever happening. The kit will include enough of these clips that if you wanna put another one higher up on the loop, you'll be able to do so. Now we can take our air assist tube coming from the back of the routing block and loop it back towards the side frame member and insert it into the stanchions. Then we can move the gantry back and forth and find the right length of tube that the tubing and the wiring harness loop together and move as one. We'll grab another one of our smaller cable clips from the kit and we'll attach it to the wiring harness and tube in this general area. And again, move the gantry back and forth and make sure that the wires are not getting pulled on and that the cable clip is in a good position where the hose and harness are following the same path. Now that we're happy with how the hoses and wires are constrained, we can go around the machine and tighten up any of the cable ties that we had left loose earlier. You can also add more cable ties where you see fit, especially to the areas of the harness that are not moving. And at this point, I'll address a question that I'm sure I'll get in the comment section, and that is why not just go with a series of cable chains? And the answer to that is that good quality cable chains can be quite expensive, plus I feel like they're a little bit overkill for this application. Also, cable chains are intended to be used a certain way, and if you're not using them correctly in some circumstances, it can actually lead to more abrasion. Furthermore, the cables and hoses that go inside of cable chains are supposed to be rated for that application because they're going to be constantly rubbing the inside of the cable chain. Those specialty cables and hoses can be quite costly, and none of the kits that I've seen online are using those properly rated cables or hoses anyways. And so I feel like my solution is a good balance between cost, complexity, and the function that it needs to serve. The wire harness is now no longer on the bottom of the frame and it's not bending inwards towards the work area, potentially coming in contact with your workpiece or dragging along the rough surface of the honeycomb bed. And at the end of the Y axis travel, there's now sufficient room for the harness so that it does not get pinched between the gantry and the rear frame member. And now the rear limit switch can properly work during the homing process. And one of the nice things about this kit is that it's fully compatible with the X-Tool enclosure which fits particularly tightly around the frame of the D1 Pro. Our new wire and hose management system puts the entry or exit point for the air assist tube 
right at the existing hole in the side of the enclosure. And so that's it, we now have a nice wire and air assist hose management system that's fully compatible with the Xtool D1 enclosure, as well as some of my other modifications like the D1 Pro LED lighting kit. If that caught your eye, I'll put a link to that in the top right hand corner of the screen. And if you're looking for more accessories and upgrades for the Xtool D1 Pro, check out the rest of my YouTube channel as well as my website, embracemaking.com. Thanks for watching.